Huh. Watching Kyle's unboxing videos again? Yeah, he always finds the coolest... No way! A robot dog? Gotta ask where he got it. Or use your Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra. Just draw a circle around the dog on your screen, and it shows you where to buy it right in the app. Oh, I just learned a new trick. And that for once, I beat Kyle to the next big thing. Circle it, find it, with the new Galaxy S24 Ultra, and circle the search with Google. Get yours now at Samsung.com. Internet connection required. Results may vary based on visuals. Welcome to the Bare Naked ABCs, where we discuss every single Bare Naked Lady song from seven to why. And why? Tonight... Because we love you. <laughs> <laughs> You've been waiting to say that all this time. And that just occurred to me. That was oh. top of my dome. I'm spitting free. <laughs> you have waited 294 episodes. <laughs> I know it. <laughs> Drop the bomb. <laughs> you dropped the bomb on me. Um, so yeah tonight we're going to be discussing the song when you dream um if you've never heard this song before here is a quick snippet But having joining me tonight, um, I have with me Betsy and Aaron. Welcome. Hello, thank you. Hey. And Aaron, you get the all important question of oh. what album is this from? <laughs> Obviously a page song and beautifully rendered. It's probably either maroon or stunt. I don't remember a stunt having anything this lush or soft, though, so I guess I'm going to guess Maroon. Ah, come on! (laughs) (laughs) So close. It's interesting. Matter of fact, it is the finishing song. Ooh, that's a nice closer. Nice closer. Well, that's up until now. I disagree with you on that. Oh, okay. (laughs) I disagree we're gonna, with your disagreement, Tracy. We're going to get into it here, I think. Oh, yeah. Uh, so up until now, when I've thought of stun, I've thought of like one week or it's all been done or alcohol. I guess I kind of forgot about call and answer. That's kind of got a nice kind of soft element mm-hmm. to it. Um, but yeah, no, this is, uh, this is a, I was going to say it's like a lullaby, but no, it is a lullaby. Uh, mm-hmm. And it's a, a very ambient song. If Stephen's voice weren't so iconic, I could have mistaken this for like a Brian Eno tune. And uh, yeah, stun. It, it finishes the album. I don't. I have a problem with this finishing the album. I really There's a trouble do. with Tracy. Is it, it is. with the song in general, or just you don't think it's a good one to close on? Well, one, I don't think it's a good one to close on. I I don't like the idea of finishing an album, especially a, a as vibrant and upbeat an album as this one is with this song. Um. To me, a finishing song should always make you want to flip it over and start on the other side again. And this song. Ah, you're saying this one is so good that you just stay on this song and repeat it so you never go back to the beginning. That's what you're saying, right, Tracy? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) See, that's so odd because one of my favorite albums of all time, the two disc Melancholy and the Infinite Sadness by Smashing Pumpkins, ends on a song called Farewell and Good Night. And it's got a kind of lullaby good night closing out uh feel to it i think it's very appropriate for ending an album but that's just me it depends on the like township of king great way to end that album because it does make me want to flip to the other side and hear hear the next song again this song doesn't make me feel that way it doesn't definitely doesn't make me want to go oh let me listen to one week now like (laughs) it's not it is a very different kind of song which is kind of to my point that i associate stunt with the more upbeat poppy peppy feel but uh i mean i dig it but betsy you've been quiet go ahead (laughs) yeah please jump in here i i think it's a nice song to close on because it's just kind of like tying it up in a little bow and it's just kind of 
all right, that's the end. And <laughs> all things must end. So I, I mean, if you want to like use it as a little refresher nap and then start the album over again, that's good. But like, I mean, I, I like it at the end. I think it fits there. Okay. All right. I'm just going to disagree. <laughs> Um, so this also was on the one week single, um, but it wasn't, it was the demo that was on the one week single of just Paige singing mm. accompanied by an acoustic guitar. An interesting choice that they're like, oh, you know what? Instead of taking one of the songs that's on, let's take the demo of our slowest song on this album <laughs> and let's put that as our B-side. <laughs> yeah, I don't quite get that. Yeah, I don't know about why they would do it with the demo unless they just really like the demo and want to get the song out there in a different form. But maybe, maybe Steve's like, I really like demo let's make this happen <laughs> can we bring this back <laughs> yeah the demo was a little too I mean I know it's supposed to be like a, a mellow song but I really liked all the the elements of the the beeps and the boops and all that that Kevin <laughs> brought in with the sampling yeah. and, the, uh, and the effects oh. I really that's what yeah. really kind of made it kind of distinctive for me i guess i can i am assuming this was an actual lullaby because that was, would have been around the time where he was newly a father right well it was so, when his son was a year old okay yeah. so so i'm, I'm thinking so, that we'll, go, so, uh, um go betsy found this wonderful uh thing on tonight um and sent it to me i'm going to share it with everyone in case people haven't been able to hear it yet uh mm -hmm. where is it? Oh, over here uh right it's, it's when, you dream. when you yes. dream yes i absolutely love that song when my son was small i listened to it and i am just that's not and i want to know what your inspiration was <laughs> your children or we, we wrote a lot of that record in uh, this little tiny bedroom that was next to my son's bedroom my son was about uh Maybe he was a year old at that point, or even a little less. And uh, so he would have his naps whenever I'd write songs. So I always just thought about how the, whatever, I was in here making music fairly loudly, and he would sleep very soundly next to it. So it just starts, you start thinking about what goes on behind their brains before, behind their eyelids when they're thinking, when they're dreaming, before they can actually communicate those Thank things. You. Thank you very much. Right. I think we're going to play that tonight, but we don't know it yet. <laughs> Good. So this was obviously on the Bare Naked Ladies Are Men Are Me tour um, just prior to that being released because they were playing a new song from that album every single tour, uh, every single uh, stop on that tour, as well as playing all of their old stuff in. And I believe this was probably the uh, small version that was done during the Peep Show because on mm. that they also um, had these intimate little sections of where they would talk and they played every single song of their back catalog that they'd ever done um, which is what they're referring to there so my guess is it was done during that tour well I was just thinking if this is something that Stephen wrote you know for his child it might I can understand why he'd probably want to have a version with just him and guitar and it'd be more like him actually singing a lullaby um, but I have to say I prefer the more produced version. And I'm going to disagree with both of you again. Oh, wow, Tracy, what is going on tonight? Yeah. I know, I know. Um, it's like I'm, you're a cartoon character. I know, you have this <laughs> really pretty positive cartoony ethereal background and you're like, <laughs> I'm gonna spew vitriol on all oh, of my. you. Oh <laughs> my. No, wait a minute. Someone stole my haterade. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and I obviously That's drank it if you look at the background. <laughs> <laughs> no, it looks like it took some mushrooms. <laughs> um, I like the demo version a little bit more. And hmm. I will say that by like the third minute, I really started to get bored 
Um, I like <laughs> the simplicity of it, but by the third minute, I'm like, oh, it does need some more stuff. That's why I like sense and stuff. <laughs> well, there's that too. Yeah, I mean, it is a lullaby. But for me, the the album version was too chaotic. It was it was too I, many things. In I the know it. I, I know what you're talking yeah. about. And uh-huh. I, when I heard that section, it's towards the beginning when the synths are coming in, and it's the time is kind of hard to sense, and there's kind of a couple like dual tonality going on. I love that shit because <laughs> I'm a music nerd. But I was like, Tracy's not gonna like this. No, <laughs> I, that's the part I don't like. Like I don't <laughs> like it, especially in a lullaby. Like to help, I can understand it. But it's a Stephen Page lullaby, man. It's got to be slightly iconoclastic, you know. (laughs) It just to me, it didn't work. And actually, Stephen's not the one that really did all of that. So it was mentioned that Jim took the cassette of the songs into the next room, and he would come back with like four or part five parts written. And Kevin made a bunch of digital samples Mm -hmm. of air. I'm hearing a lot of. Cregan Hearn influence. So wait, wait, say, say, say that last part again. He took a bunch of digital samples of air conditioners. Okay, I wanted to make and sure various yeah. and various motor noises and loop. He pitched them. them. Yeah. Okay. And then he also took an assortment of vintage music boxes and yeah. looped those in That's as well, and have. just had them yeah. random. And they came back in. And had added this in when Stephen came back in to to hear what was going on. I it is not recorded what Steve thought of that. Um, I have a thought on that considering the fact that Steve later on wanted the the other version of this. On yeah, the one it week. it does give credence to the idea that he he conceived it as a very simple lullaby. Uh, I do. They I also do... made a version of this with just the air conditioner and sample and all the music boxes and reverse guitar. Interesting. It was voted out by everyone on the band. Huh. That sounds like a Radiohead song. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or I shouldn't say everyone on the vamp, but it was it was definitely voted out. So the the way that BNL works is it's majority rules. Yeah. So okay, Interesting. at least three of them said no. <laughs> Interesting. And Kevin was, according to the book, Kevin was pretty upset about that. He mm. said he had to take a long walk. <laughs> Which I guess is about as mad as Kevin can possibly get. <laughs> that's the, that's the Canadian angry. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Jeez, darn. Okay, ah. I gotta go. I gotta take a walk. Okay? <laughs> I gotta go get a Molson. <laughs> yeah, hosers. Yeah, hosers. I I I don't know, guys. I I gotta go. <laughs> you you can't deal with my avant garde <laughs> stuff. I don't know if I belong <laughs> with this band. Okay, so consider this then, Tracy. Yes, it's a lullaby. But I don't know how vivid your dreams are, mm. but mine can get pretty vivid. And are they in black and white or in color? <laughs> yeah, or Yiddish actually. Yiddish. Um, <laughs> and um, <laughs> you know, so who knows what goes on in the mind of like an almost one year old? Like it probably is like a little bit of like recollecting the day of like I was playing with Tinker Toys and then I was playing with Dad's guitar and then I heard the air conditioner and it's so it's probably like kind of like a summation of the day and in, in his mind in a, like an audio kind of collage is what I'm thinking that that's what they're trying to get across. And, and I think it comes across. It just isn't enjoyable <laughs> yeah, to me. As someone who suffers from tinnitus and cannot fall asleep without an air conditioner or a fan or some kind of white noise being generated, I feel like that's pretty appropriate. <laughs> well, I just did the school <laughs> yeah. thing of should I feel the similarity? <laughs> yes, no, I totally understand that. What is this? Yeah, you, you take that was it a like this. Hang loose. I'm the same. Yeah. That was a California it's, it's the quiet, quietly agreeing in, in school. Oh, God. I've never seen that before. Yeah. I, something new every day. There are things that are in this song that I did not recognize or see in there. Jim is on the acoustic and electric double bass. I didn't hear any bass at all. Um, really? I thought I did. <laughs> I mean, I guess I could have. But I think it's also just because there's so much other stuff going on. Yeah, it's on. pretty, like I said, it's a very lush sound. Yeah, you can hear the bass. Well, the bass where it's like boom, boom, boom. 
But when sleep sets in History begins But the future will win When you dream It's pretty, yeah, it's pretty pretty resonant. I mean, I guess maybe, like I said, it could have been interpreted as like synth keyboard bass, but it's very deep and resonant. I can hear can hear Jim doing the walks, yeah. And, and it might Christopher just be walking. because my brain my brain was only hearing the the air conditioner and the the jeep I mean the the music boxes. I think if it had been one music box, it would it wouldn't have been so dissonant for me. Like I think it was the the music boxes together at the same time and Steven's words like doubling up on himself and the the air conditioners like overlapping i was just like it it became too much for me i i get that but in my mind that's like dreams can get kind of like warpy and like uh you know a flow strangely and Mm -hmm. can like loop back on themselves and have things elements swapped out and changed and everything so I still believe that it's very programmatic. <laughs> I agree. To borrow the term. I think. I think every it other I think... episode. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, Aaron, do you want to break it down for us? Mm. Sure. Let's break it down. So, when you dream was recorded at pretty much 118 beats per minute it seems like it's perfectly aligned for like the first half and then the second half it sort of gets out of tune so it almost kind of sounds like they maybe splice two takes together or i don't know what happened or they're just like super duper locked in and slowly started to to move away but it's it's really really very much in sync uh, with 118 beats per minute for like the first half of the song and then it slightly pulls away from that um You'll notice the song is in an odd time signature, and it's got just a slightly wistful feel to it. So if you're playing Aaron Bingo at home, you probably have a good idea of how I'll end up scoring this one. Uh, <laughs> what was the odd time signature? I think it's just in 3-4. Uh, though. I, no, it could be like a slower 12-8. Um, but either way, it's, it's something divisional by 3. <laughs> 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 depending on how you subdivide it um but yeah I, I, probably probably is a slow 12 8 which uh in which case yeah but uh either way it's in the key of e major but it sounds almost sad at times proving like goodbye to romance by ozzy osbourne that sad songs do not have to be written in minor keys um the verse changes are pretty simple most of the songs pretty simple uh e major to b major a major to E major to B major, then resolving back to E major and repeating. So it's one, five, four, one, five, all major chords. The pre chorus, which is what I'm calling this kind of next short section, uh, I wouldn't argue with someone who wanted to include it as like the end of the verse, but we have F sharp minor to B major, and we repeat that three times. So it's two to five, two to five, two to five, and the two is, of course, minor. So this is such a perfect tension builder and this is where i'm going to nerd out a little so i apologize (laughs) in advance but we hear 251 all the time in in popular music and we're still used to hearing it um right you reserve you resolve down to the tonic but this is prolonging that it's building the tension because you hear the two and it moves to the five and you really want to hear it resolve down to the tonic but the resolution is delayed not once but twice and only on the third time around do we finally resolve back to the tonic of e major in the chorus which we'll call the c changes so i had a changes for verse uh b for the pre-chorus c for the chorus <clears throat> and this would be like when you dream you have e major to b major uh and then a new figure sort of starts with f sharp minor which is our magic chord here really because it's a very major song but this is like the one minor chord, and it's a kind of very prominent. It helps to highlight that slightly wistful tone uh, to A major, back to E major, and that repeats. Now, I will point out at this point, the song is a lullaby, 
And F-A-E spells Fay. Just an interesting observation, very possibly a coincidence. Uh, but it's got that kind of fairy tale uh ramification. So, but you know, uh 251 is extremely common as a turnaround. So it happens to be in the key of A major or E major. This would be uh F A E. Either way, this works out to one five two. So uh, yeah, one five two four one. Uh then we have finally um yeah we have so to reiterate e major to b major to f sharp minor to a major to e major back to f sharp minor to a major to e major finally landing on b major which is our fifth so we can land uh and gently and and quite resolvedly back to e major the tonic so the structure to my thinking is you have the intro verse one which is your a changes pre-chorus your b changes chorus your c changes uh, verse two, A, pre-chorus, B, chorus C, and then the outro. There's no bridge. Very simple. Uh, I mean, you could argue, you could call the pre-chorus a bridge of sorts because it's like a transformational um, section between the verse and the chorus, but you repeat it. But anyways, that, that's pretty good. A, B, C, A, B, C, and then you have the intro and outro, which is, like I said, sort of playing with tonality. I wouldn't try to, uh, to put it in a very uh, particular sense, but... Yeah, um, I think this is a beautiful song. It, it kind of makes me wish I had kids so I could sing this to them. Uh, you know, it's just it's it's very soothing to me and uh, definitely a song that I could lay down to at the end of the night and relax to and, you know, um, to try and uh, just relax. It's just it's very I don't know. There's something very um, reassuring. There's something very calming about this piece. Um, and I would be remiss in my duties if i did not make an esoteric song comparison i'm not <laughs> going to radiohead i'm not going to they might be giants uh this time i'm going to ween uh they have a great song very lullaby like too as well called she's your baby jenny came back from the stand of a Kafka in hand and a bunny in a can slipping and sliding you feel yourself asking why would you want me to try squeezing your wrist and she's pulling you closer down where the devil's all dying with laughter and led to a place where there's no form of she blows you a kiss from the lips She's your baby she Well, oh, I adore I that song like that that's, that's like a perfect song to me But this one comes close and it's got a similar feel I think What did you think? Then? <laughs> well, it's a Except ween song the There's a little chaos in there I mean, you meant there's re references to Kafka <laughs> I don't know what a bunny in a can is, but that's kind of disturbing. So, yeah, it's, it's you know, it is what it is. I love Ween, but uh, what, what did you think? I have no, I can't don't say know what a bunny, in a, can a bunny in a can is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm missing out. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> they are the best way to have bunnies. Um, Gross. <laughs> Oh, come on. It's like smoke haddock. <laughs> anyway, uh, I like this song. Yeah. <laughs> what were your thoughts, Betsy? <laughs> prefer them alive. You prefer so that kids? <laughs> we don't get sued at the clinic. <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> uh, B&L has what about not Steve played Pate? this often in, in concert. So okay, so so bare naked ladies have played it four times in concert. They have not played it since Stephen left. Last time they played it was the last day of Ships and Dips five. Mm. Yes, okay. and so just before Stephen left. Even before that, it wasn't very often. Um, even on their like snack time tour, they didn't didn't really play mm. this, which I would have <laughs> thought would have been the time, but. Steven, that however, has played it nine times. Seems like a pretty personal song, from home right? you know, like something he wrote for um, his As a child, matter of so. I was just going to say, so as a matter there of fact, is. 
when he played it live, not only did he play it live, he Aww. played it live with Isaac right there with him. <laughs> Full circle. And if you can't see from the pictures, I'll put it into the the link. But yeah, I mean, there's no doubt that Isaac is. Versus, I was afraid of Isaac falling asleep during this. Not important this as much as I am. <laughs> Life just begun My sleeping new son Has eyes that roll back in his head They flutter and jump He slows down his heart And pictures the world past his bed As I watch you breathe And then finally resolve <laughs> it's, it's great. I love it. It's so beautiful. <laughs> mind drifts and weaves and you dream. What do you dream about? It is. When you dream. Gorgeous. What do you dream? But yeah, it's a very long time. About? So like if you don't have more things mixed in, yeah, it will it will drag. Should we talk about not what the meaning of the song is? Because obviously I think we, we know what the meaning of the song is. That's pretty pretty simple. Um but about the, the words and well, the Well, before we do, I is mean, there the anything the that, that either of you wanted to add about the music in particular? Is this where I bring up my <laughs> I'd say so reference or no? Okay. Um, I don't even know, Tracy, if you can put the song, um, <laughs> our chat, uh, the song I'm talking about in, uh, but the song with this. <laughs> All right. <laughs> get that coupon. Yep. Shop now. Get it before Christmas. So, um, so this <laughs> song, Wake Up by Jonathan Colton, it, it kind of Burst. feels like a counterpart to it, like, like a like a second, like a sequel almost. How so? I'll let it play first. Wake up, the day's begun, reach out, and take the sun, shine it on the face of a sweet dream and make it come true. Wake up. So, so tell us more about the is waiting for you. Uh, so this is not necessarily, it feels kind of like a lullaby to me, this wake up song, but it doesn't necessarily kind of pigeonhole itself in an, uh, mm. uh, an age bracket. But it does mention something about like baby blues and the whole world's waiting on you. So it kind of does have a feel of like um, this is, you know, a, a child going out into the world kind of. But um, I don't know. When you listen to the whole thing through and compare the two, it, it does feel like mm. one's kind of bleeding into the other. And the other one, you know, the wake up is kind of continuing um, where when you dream left off. So it's, it's, it's just, it complements it nicely. It reminded me bookends. a lot of each of the other. Oh uh, yeah. Bookends. So. Yeah. I like that one. Better. Yeah. Well then there you go. Bookends. <laughs> you introduced me to a song. Oh, 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 so, okay. I misunderstood. Yeah. So the <laughs> monkey bookends. 
<laughs> and yeah, I can see it's definitely less uh, discordant than when you dream. So I'm sure that appeases your brain a little more. Yeah, it does. It does. I'm simple that way. Excellent. <laughs> yeah, I'd be, I'd be very I would love to hear Stefan's take on it, though. <laughs> Uh, we were supposed to have um, a a guest tonight. Unfortunately, he was not able um, to make it, uh, but he did send me his thoughts today when I was talking with him, and I'm pulling them up right now. Um, so we were supposed to have Eric uh, Butterworth joining us tonight, and unfortunately, he's he's busy. He's been looking forward to coming on to this because, as he says, I'm so annoyed, too, because this is my least favorite song. <laughs> and I was going to give wow. it a truly really awful rating. Oh, my God. <laughs> Spread that hate. <laughs> Jesus. Oof. Um, he was going to give it a two out of five. What the um, hell? It, Does it, he have kids? <laughs> he Dream wanted Jesus. to give it a rating of Dream Jesus's. <laughs> Oh, oh! For the record, if we're talking about ratings, um, I'm, yeah, I'm going like to pitch Fontanelles. That's, nice. that's very nice. <laughs> Which oh, actually, now to I think about, we're the Fontanelles, the doop, yeah. <laughs> uh, very, very, yeah. <laughs> Gladys and the Fontanelles. I don't know if I would have listened to that. Group. <laughs> um. So he says two. He he would give it two for the lovely, nice melody and the pretty vocals, but it's the lyrics and the pace. <laughs> um, he says, "I have no okay, frame of but reference." But neither do I. For having did, did children. his parents sing to him when he was a little kid? Come on, <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know. Um, he says it doesn't speak to me on any level, and could you be any slower of a slow song? <laughs> Right, because I want Primus when um, I'm going to bed, obviously. What the hell? <laughs> uh, he so. says, when I downloaded all my CDs onto the computer, this is the wow. one and only BNL song that didn't make the cut. Rude. Like That's an amazing song, Guns too. Roses, November what? Rain. Oh, I man. Love and, then, and then he says, never mind, <laughs> rereading my notes. I'm giving it a 1.5 for the music and vocals sound. Hey, nice. I like to be open minded and everything, <laughs> I but flabbergasted and gobsmacked. <laughs> wow. Eric is like one of the nicest guys that we well, know. Well, his words are <laughs> not very nice. Really. Quite acerbic, I think. I mean, he's harsher on it than I would have been. Yeah. Wow. Um, and harder than wow. I will be, but yeah. He's... He doesn't like somebody. I would. Nah, I would definitely okay. say he likes it less than me. <laughs> Maybe well, we got that right seems like as good a transition as any to talk about the lyrics. <laughs> and can I just say, let's see, where is it? There's yeah. Can I just say? Yeah. Can I? I might. I might. You can. Would you? Um, oh, rhyming <laughs> boisterous with noises just. Mwah. Chef's kiss. Chef's kiss. Yes. That's fantastic. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. Yeah, I mean the lyrics are really. I love the lyrics in this. Um, to to look and think about what his son might be dreaming about mm. while listening to this or while thinking about this. I love the fact that he's like he doesn't like go into the mushy kind of <laughs> stuff. He does, but he also you know, do you dream of music or <laughs> mathematics? <laughs> Like this one-year-old <laughs> dreaming of mathematics. Well, you can't really hear about music without dreaming about me. mathematics. I mean, really, but yeah. I just feel like <laughs> it's great because it doesn't talk <laughs> down. And it's like, you know, once the child, uh, you know, gets mm -hmm. a little older and can kind of comprehend what's going on, it's, it's not like, you know, it, it, I don't know. It's, it's just, it seems it's a very, I don't know. It just, it's very honest. It's just like written from a place where you can kind of really understand where, where Steve's coming from. And well, and he, he takes it from the like, are you are your dreams simple? Are they ex explosive and amazing? <laughs> are they uh, like this, like neon type thing, or are they are you able to conceive things that we are not able to conceive of in this young? brain because you have so little of life that is impeding you you know though and he says it 
very poetically and and quickly, but like, do you dream quantum of mechanics, Jesus yeah. or mathematics? <laughs> I mean, or quantum mechanics? Mm-hmm. Like, well, and, you know, it's such an amazing juxtaposition. Well, and like there. that kind of reflects to me too, like like the potential that this kid's life has. You know, yeah, all the different versions in the multiverse that might be or, or or are simultaneously. Yeah, I love it. I love it. It's great. Yeah. I will say my least favorite line of this is his fun. <laughs> it's kind of an icky uh, visual, but uh, I mean, because... I like I like oh, this idea. Oh, yeah. Kind of speaks to what we were talking <laughs> about, like. Um, well, he brings up he brings up you know do you dream in was it English or Yiddish? So like. <laughs> Uh, I'm a little out of my depth yeah. here, not being culturally or spiritually Jewish, but like, uh, I'm pretty sure isn't the concept of like the chamber of guff, like this place where all the souls are drawn from before they're given to bodies or whatever. I just think of something like that or like, you know, yeah. even in, because I know Stephen probably has, you know, interesting views on, on religion, you know, the concept of like reincarnation or things like that is the idea that you may have lived a past life and then, you know, you're coming into this new one where you don't retain any of that. So you're kind of uh, tabula rasa. Uh, I don't know. I just love it. I, I, in fact, you mentioned Snack Time earlier, Tracy, and I actually had the thought while I was listening to this. If all of the songs on Snack Time had been of this caliber, then I would have rated that uh, that whole album much higher. <laughs> because I, I love this is the kind of stuff that I would play for my kids. Definitely. <laughs> definitely. I think this song would have been the best one on there. Long done Snack Time. Not slamming snack time per se, just like oh, this is a great song. I mean, oh my goodness! I'm gonna, I'm gonna oh, we're gonna have respectfully words. Respectfully disagree, but <laughs> <laughs> I mm. love the line of when the memories that he he'll learn to ignore, though, with going along with that reincarnation type of thing of like we we choose to ignore the things that we have gone through in life in past lives in order to be able to succeed and, and go on in this life yeah i thought with reincarnation maybe i'm wrong that you do kind of retain elements of the past from past people depends past on what version events. of reincarnation you're talking about but, but yeah yeah most definitely there are some well then yeah, because I got the impression of like some stuff like followed yeah. him and through somehow. Yeah, yeah. Which is what I liked mm. about that, like that he's learned to ignore. Like they're there. You just you learn to not connect to those right. pieces. Like you don't remember being born, <laughs> that sort of thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Which is a good thing to not remember. I and mean, yeah, probably generally speaking. <laughs> The most unusual line I think in this is "Do you hear?" <laughs> yeah, that was an odd one. Yeah. But I'm guessing that was like a song that he heard on the radio when he was a kid. So he's kind of <laughs> trying to bring it back to his experience and trying to relate to what it would be like to be a child now. Maybe, or maybe it was like what was that on the radio at true. the moment that he was writing this song, <laughs> and he's like, "Are you dreaming of that?" Because that's what we're listening to right at this moment, or. But yeah, I just thought it was very, very random. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, that's... And it's not a lullaby. Like, Del right. Shannon's Runaway is not a, a lullaby song. Um, if you've never heard that, here's a here's a quick snippet of that song. As I walk along, I wonder what went wrong with our love A love that was so strong In the year 25 25. Yeah. Yeah. I don't remember if he was part of that group or not. It's just thinking oh, that. It's like a ukulele. <laughs> he pulled my guitar really high. <laughs> oh, yeah. Classic dude. Classic dude. Run, 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 run away. 
I'm looking at this guy though, and I'm sitting here. Yeah, going, he he looks kind of like if Roy yeah. Orbison does not a lot of coke. A little alien kind of. <laughs> I was thinking more like he looks like the guy that like. Yeah, he looks like he's from a David Lynch movie. Back and the shit out of you, <laughs> <laughs> like. It looks like he's an alien on X Files. He does not send happy vibes yeah. to me. Oh, uh, all How right. Many well, Fontanelles? Should, should we put some no- Fontanelle. Fontanelle. How many Fontanelles would you give oh, this, song. Fontanelle. this song? Oh my goodness. Um, Betsy, how many Fontanelles do you give this song? Oh, a fair number. Let's see. <laughs> a fair number. Um, of yes. <laughs> I used to sing this to my daughter oh, nice. all the time, Aww. and I and I debated putting the lyrics on the wall, and then and then nice. I was just too tired and busy and didn't get around to it. <laughs> but I would have. Um, so, I mean, I guess the only caveat would be I do have to be in like the right frame of mind to listen to it. It's yeah. not, you know. My go-to jams aren't necessarily lullabies, <laughs> um, but uh, considering what it is, um, I will give it a four point eight five fontanelles. Very nice, very wow. nice. Yes. All right, what about you, Aaron? It's so tough. I. Part of me wants to rate this a five just because I feel like you're going to bomb it. But uh, <laughs> it, it's I, I mean, it's certainly very easily in my on my best of playlist. Um, I don't know if I mean, it's not a perfect song, but it's it's really nice. I'm going to say four point six five Fontanelles. Yeah. Four point six five. OK. All right. Um, You know what? I want to be fair. Don't let, let us peer let pressure fair, you. It's yeah. fine. To, you know, everyone everyone takes a turn drinking the no, hater. I, I'm I'm gonna be fair. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna sort the sheet, and I'm gonna go down through this, and what I'm going to sheep? decide <laughs> snort the sheep. No, it's a snort. Well, I mean, we counted the sheep that were falling off the building yeah, last did. week, so sure it's did. only fair that we that we Count sort the them this week. They're very hard to sort when they've fallen off the yeah. building. Pretty bouncy, though. <laughs> <laughs> They're well insulated. But says the lady that just said that she did not want to say anything about canned <laughs> rabbits. Because if you they guys, they're both a pretty bad. On, they're me. like just gonna they're gonna land and they're gonna go. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, what would be a good example for BNL of a of another song like this? <laughs> why why did War on Ooh. Drugs pop into my head? What's wrong with me? <laughs> <laughs> What's the opposite Definitely. of this song? <laughs> I think this one is most what's the, similar what's to the song at the end of my Yoko Ono. Not <laughs> uh what's the, the oh, song no. at the end of Everything to Everyone? The song at the end um, of Eatery? Oh God, I don't know. This is not how I store information in my, my brain, love? Tracy. <laughs> have you seen my love? Okay, what did I give? Have you seen my love? I gave that a three point five. I like this better than I love. Have you seen my love? Uh, I'm going to give this a three point six. All right, all right, all right, all right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> not what it deserves, um, but all right. So, I don't know how to transition to this next song. It, there's no way to transition to this. Is this part of the transition um, that you're... I'm guessing I mean, it is. Yeah. The only... I, I mean, immediately, I want to go to say, like, who knew that this would happen? <laughs> That's not next week's song. Next week's song is "Who Can It Be Now?" So I have to skip a song to make the to make the pun. <laughs> Maybe if there's a paternity <laughs> test involved. <laughs> you are not the father. Who can it wow. be? Wow. Who can it be now? Who can it be? <laughs> knocking. Time to go wait, to wait, guys. We might have to cut this joke, but who can it be knocking up my girl? 
<laughs> oh, I Hitting don't think that's where the line is, Aaron. <laughs> We uh, trust worst lines. Oh yeah, sneaking across the floor. I mean, so yes, next week's song is is the B and L cover of "Who Can It Be Now." Nice. Okay. Well, I love that song, so I'm curious to hear their take on and it. And I won't ask you next week what album it comes from because it it's very obvious what album it comes from. So, oh my. <laughs> See that's the line. Betsy. That that's, that's a line, line right there. That, wow, <laughs> that's a line I won't cross. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, we'll see you next week when we ask who can it be now who will be joining us for that episode. <laughs> Thanks. Well, thank that was fun. Don't forget, no regrets. Except me. To celebrate joining Pantheon Podcasts, Rock Camp, the podcast, the official podcast of Rock and Roll Fantasy Camp, is giving away a guitar signed by Mike Portnoy of Dream Theater, Marty Friedman, formerly of Megadeth, and legendary shredder Zach Wild, plus our rock star counselors like Vinny Apice, Monty Pittman, and more. To enter to win, simply follow, rate, and review our podcast on your preferred platform, and that's all you have to do. For more information, go to rockcamp.com forward slash podcast.